Take care of some price from Wall Center. And oh, I've been looking forward to this for some, some time. Yeah. Feeling like you need some revenge for always losing? Well, as you know, I took Take 5, our old radio segment, very, very seriously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was head-to-head debate, folks. Sakaris versus Price. Oftentimes went down to the wire. Final vote. Final debate of the season. We had to retire the segment from the podcast when we went exclusively podcast. But we're bringing it back today in a well, slightly expanded format. Yeah. Still two minutes per hour. More democratic, really. More votes. Yes. Yeah. Which I quite enjoy. Yeah. Bigger sample size. More exactly. Scientific. Exactly. Yeah. Because, you know, oftentimes just haters would get in the jury box and vote against me. You know this. You had more hired guns in the jury box. What are than you talking about? How dare else. you? So the topic today, the question today, will should the Canucks buy out OEL this summer? I will be arguing yes. Blake will be arguing no. Two minutes per argument. And then we're going to let you on YouTube mm-hmm. vote for who made the better argument. And this is what we are voting on here. The better argument, not what I think the Canucks should do, what I think the Canucks will do. We're asking you to set aside those biases and vote strictly on who made the better argument. You know they're just going to vote what they think. Okay. Hey, instructions to the jury happen every single day in every yeah, single Whether they room. listen to them or not. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So Grady's keeping time here. You will hear a buzzer. Uh, we haven't decided who goes first. Do you want to go first or do you want to go second? Uh, I'll go second. Okay. Mm. Grady, buddy, you want to let me know when we're going here? Count me down. We will go in five, four, mm. three, five. two, one. Mr. Sakaris, you have two minutes starting well, now. Well, of course they should buy out OEL. First of all, they've been better without him. It's undeniable. When he's in the lineup, they struggle defensively. When he's on the sidelines, they're okay. He's replaceable. And he's replaceable at a much lower cost. And with defensemen we never thought could step in for him. Guys like Guillaume Brisebaugh, who's done fine. More importantly, they have no other way to instantly clear $7 million plus in cap savings for next season. They have no other recourse to do that. And they have no other recourse with OEL, given that he's got a no-move clause. Now, you're going to have to take money back on a Brock Besser or a Connor Garland deal. I think we learned that here at the deadline when they were trying to move those guys to no avail. And even if you were able to, and let's play fantasy land here, trade both of those guys out without taking too much money back— well, then you're losing the production of two decent wingers. Not great, but I'd much rather lose OEL, quote-unquote, production than Besser and Garland combined. The bio time is now. Otherwise, you forfeit the huge savings available next season. From a cap perspective, it is now or never. If you think you're eventually going to be buying out OEL, then you might as well buy him out now. This is where you reap the biggest savings this coming season. They're going to need the cap space not only to improve the team for next year, but also to pay Petey and Roenick because they've only added to their financial obligations in future years with Roenick, the signing of McKayev, the extension for Guzmanko. By the time the cap penalties come around in 27-28, $2.1 million they'll have on their books for four seasons. It won't be as onerous because the cap will be going up. Look, 2027 is way down the road. Buy them out now. Get the savings. Be competitive as soon as possible. Wow. Right in the nick of time. Right to the nth degree there. Yeah. To the last syllable. All right, Mr. Price. Yeah, ready when you are, sir. Time is coming in five, four, three, two, one. You are off. No, not now. Buying out OEL is the textbook problem that has ailed this organization for a decade, immediate relief. The seeking of immediate relief 
at the expense of long-term health. The on-ice issues are there and must be managed via healthy scratches or any other way, but you don't risk your long-term health. The OEL buyout looks so good for the next two years. He's almost gone. But then he isn't. Because when those two years are gone, guess what? This six-year sentence you signed up for in the first place, it's back. Six more years of OEL taking up space on the books. And two years from now, just as the Canucks are presumably rounding into form, they now start to get hit hard again with two straight years of $4.76 million on the cap. What is that in roster terms? A solid fourth defenseman on a good team, a great third-line center. Do you want one of those, or do you want a dead cap hit? Now, you might be thinking, well, if you don't buy him out, then you're paying an even bigger cap hit at that point anyway. Well, if you fancy yourself a good GM, then you won't. Maybe you find a way to make a trade, retaining a smaller hit than 4.76. Maybe that player, who would be 434 then, by the way, in OEL, now finds themselves on LTIR after a rash of injuries. Or maybe none of that happens and you finally decide to buy him out then. Guess what? Still a lower cap hit. Becomes just under 4.2 for the following two years. You could do nothing until then and you'd still save money. So why get distracted by the cap savings over the next two years? You can't exactly sign any big money free agents with those dollars. You know you'll get squeezed just two years later and you won't have the room for them. Stop kicking the can down the road. Pull off a more advantageous trade. Retain 1.5 and trade for a guy like Ryan Johansson. Nashville would love you for it. Something of the like. Stop chasing immediate gratification and the cap is not going up. And there you have it. Surely the cap is going up at some point. Yeah. Nevertheless. Banks are collapsing, but yes. Cap <laughs> a bank collapsed. Two. Two banks. Yeah. Oh, there's the second one? Yeah, yeah. Hopefully not one I own stock in. No, probably not. Okay. Yeah. All right, so there you have it, everybody. You can vote on who made the better argument on the OEL on the OEL buyout.